We've got lots to get through today, so let's move straight into it. Father, we commit this time to you right now. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. You said that where two or more are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And we thank you for your presence here right now. We thank you, Lord God, that your word shall bring revelation here today. For that is what you are building your church on. Revelation knowledge, revelation impartation. So, Father, we thank you for that impartation here today. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get straight back to our base scripture. Uh, Hosea chapter 6. And uh, I'm just going to... It's a call to repentance. And how many of you know that, that God, this was written to God's people? Calling God's people to repentance. Calling them back. They've been, they've been sidetracked by various issues. Okay, so... Verse 1, Come and let us return to the Lord, for He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken, but He will bind us up. After two days He will revive us, and on the third day He will raise us up, that we may live in His sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. Hallelujah. No one understands something as we have discovered in recent weeks that a day to the Lord is as a thousand years. And so we are looking at these, so often in Scripture it's referred to on the second day or on the third day. We need to look at that and interpret it wisely. Why? Because God is talking to us. It is the, we are living in the seventh day from Adam But we are now in the third day from Christ. Well, you might as well get excited and shout Amen. You can even get Pentecostal on me and shout Amen if you like. Okay? We are in the third day. We have entered into the third millennium of the church. And how many of you know that this scripture is talking to us? It is very relevant to us today. It, and is speaking to God's people. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to God's people, to the household of God. He said, come, you need to repent. Why? Because we have strayed. We have been sidetracked. I was talking, I think it was last week, of how we've been sidetracked by the world system. The kingdom of the culture versus the kingdom of God. The kingdom of the culture is strong. The kingdom of the culture paints a picture for us as we are growing up in life. This is the way it is. But that's a cultural thing. I come from Africa. We have a different culture over there. A very different culture to what we have here. So what happens is this. We are raised up in a culture and we add a little bit of our Christian religion or whatever religion it is, we add some of that to the culture and we have this mishmash of Christian culture that is actually an insult to God. And then we wonder why we are not seeing the power of God in our lives because we are totally compromised and yet we're sitting in church every Sunday. Everything's going fine. How many of you know when Jesus was doing His earthly ministry, a lot of the people He was around were in the religion, the Jewish religion of that time, and they they were doing what they were told to do but they had been compromised. And so Jesus was not happy with what he saw, i.e. he went into the household of God one day. And what did he do there? Was he gentle Jesus, meek and mild? No. No. Jesus kicked over the tables, took out a whip and was about to start whipping folk with it. That's the same little baby Jesus that we think about. We go to church and we say, oh, little baby Jesus. No, no, no. This was gentle Jesus with a whip in his hand, kicking over the tables and glaring at the, at, at the people there who were buying and selling. Whoa, this guy means business. Why? He was, he, he was God. Yeah. 
He is God. And God was not happy and God is not happy with the compromise of what is happening. Okay, I, I want to... I'm trying to move on, okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm tra- you keep sidetracking me here. All right, let's turn to Joshua chapter 1. And uh, actually, we're going to back up a little bit into Deuteronomy 34. So Mo- verse 5, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him, he, God, buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. I hope I got that pronunciation right, did I, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Michael? <laughs> Peor, whatever. But no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face." In all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before all his servants and in all his his land. And by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of God. Everybody say terror. terror. The prophet of God worked terror in the land. Okay? The Egyptians were terrorized by this person. In today's, uh, in today's uh, 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 community, they would call him a terrorist. <laughs> okay? What is the definition of a terrorist? A good definition is one who brings terror to the people. Moses terrorized Egypt. So eventually they said, let the people go. Egypt represents the first millennial church. They came out of slavery into the promised land. They had to go through certain things on the way. They came to the Red Sea. What is the Red Sea? The Red Sea that delivered the Israelites also killed the enemies, the authority. It, that water broke the authority of Pharaoh and his minions. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. His army was a type of demonic powers oh, and principalities. And they were broken right there at the Red Sea. The Red Sea is a type of of water baptism when you go through there you better know and understand I'm doing a, a water baptism I'm not sure if it's this Sunday or next Sunday with uh, never mind that I'm getting sidetracked <laughs> okay but for a bunch of ladies who used to be ladies of ill repute okay they're getting baptized why they know they understand the power of Satan was broken over my life and I ain't going back to it And that is a type, a shadow and a type in the old covenant of what you can expect as a believer. I hear of people, well, I'm bound up in drugs and this and that. Why? Why? Jesus paid the price. You don't have to be bound up in drugs. You don't have to be sick. Well, the doctor put me on this and that. Get rid of your doctor. He's He's a pusher. He's a dealer. The last church I pastored up in Georgia, uh, the the, the pastor of the Methodist church came to me. We had a good relationship. We used to pray together every week. Great guy. Okay, he came to me one week. He was weeping. I said, what's wrong? He said, it's my people. Every single one of them, he had a big church. Every single one of them are drug addicts. I said, well, I, I know some of your sheep. Are you telling me they're on drugs? He said, every single one of them are drug addicts. I said, my God, how did that happen? He said, they all go to the same group of doctors. He said, can we pray? I said, let's pray. Or there were four doctors lost their licenses and were arrested. 
That was a number of years back. I want to tell you something. What were they doing? They were doing what they'd been, the doctors were doing what they'd been trained to do. They were getting paid for it. Amen. It is the system. The kingdom of the culture has risen up and, and captivated the people of God. And that's why God is saying, come, get back. Come back here. Let me show you a better way. Let me show you freedom. I have paid a price for your freedom. So the Israelites went through the waters of baptism in the Red Sea. They went into the wilderness. The wilderness is a type of the second millennial church. Most of you in this room were probably born again at some time during the 1900s. That makes me feel a bit old, is <laughs> there? In the 1900s, you got saved, you got born again, you had an experience with God. God was using that, and we notice here in, in, in Hosea, uh, on, on the second day, after two days, I will revive you. What was happening in the last hundred years, there was revival, and in, in every nation that I know about experienced a move of the Holy Spirit. God was reviving reviving his church not the church his church i'm not going back into that his church his church is built on revelation the church is based on culture yeah, yeah. that's a word right there there you go come on i never said that before <laughs> that, just, that just spat straight out of my mouth <laughs> The church is based on culture. His church is based on revelation. And today's revelation will become tomorrow's religion if you do not water that thing. That's why so many moves of God ended up in religion, dead religion. Why? Because they weren't watering what God had said. They were come. Oh, Ishiam Baho Loko Sele Beshihar Bakum Nanda Babo. They were, they were comfortable. They got comfortable. We got church, brother. We got church. So we end up there every Sunday. We got church. Well, guess what? That church just became a religious cultural thing. You've got to move on. You can't stay in the same place. You cannot stay in the same place. Sister, thank God. I don't know what got you to move from there to here. Thank God you were obedient. God moved me for all the way from Africa to here. I want to tell you something. I was raised up in Africa. I'm an African. I might not have a black skin. I'm an African. By the way, I lived in Africa all my life. I've never seen a black person yet. And I've been all over Europe and I've never seen a white person yet. Right. If I had to see one of them, I'd run a mile. I want to tell you something. <laughs> because everything, we, 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 we separate people just like denominations. We separate people by color of the skin. I want to tell you something. Your skin's just a little bit browner than mine. Mm. Amen. Amen. And there's other folk here that might be a little bit white. Joyce, God's choice is Joyce. But your skin's a little bit whiter than mine. Maybe you need to get out in the sun a bit more. <laughs> I think all of you know, I, 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 keep, I, I used to pastor a church in Africa and, and uh, we had a lady there called Joyce and, and I didn't know why I did it. Every single time I saw her, I pointed my finger and I said, God's choice is Joyce. Twenty-something years later, she became the first president of that nation. The first, the first woman president of that nation. And she was a housewife turned businesswoman, entrepreneur, a nobody. She ended up becoming the first woman president of that nation. Why? God's choice was Joyce. Amen. So, let's get on with it. You keep sidetracking me. I, I, I need to rebuke you for that. Do not sidetrack me. I have limited time here today. So, uh, where were we? Okay, I've lost play. Uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1. 
After, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise. Whenever God commissions anybody, one of the first things that comes out of the mouth of God is, Therefore, arise and go. Arise and go. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given it to you. As I said to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and, the, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Shall be your territory. I don't, I, I don't believe to this day that they've ever taken what belongs to them. To this day. You go and look that, that up on maps. To this day, they've never taken what God has given to them. Therefore, it is still to happen. And it will happen in your lifetime. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You will perform signs and wonders. I want to tell you, God is not just talking to Joshua today. God is talking to the spirit of Joshua that is within every single one of you on television and, and in this room right now. The spirit of Yeshua. Joshua is a type of Yeshua and God is speaking to you right now. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you when you go and do what I tell you to do. I will not leave you nor forsake you be strong be strong be strong not weak a couple of weeks ago we were looking at Isaiah and what is the function of Satan it's to weaken the nations to weaken the nations what does the spirit of Satan do it weakens the nations that's you what does it do it makes you feel good that is called culture. Hello? Come on. It's part of the culture. It makes you feel good. It makes, we, oh, it makes life easier. How many of you like, like life a little bit easier? I do. <laughs> you know? But I, I'm aware all the time of, this, of the spirit of the age encased around us in every facet of the culture today, in every facet of life today, in every facet of our world today, is the this, is this spirit of the age, the spirit of Satan, trying to weaken the nations. Whenever you put on your television, there's somebody advertising this product or that product, and, and, uh, you know, and, and what does it do? It it might give you temporary relief, but it is not going to cure you. It is not designed to cure you. It is designed to captivate you. It is designed to enslave you. Government. Whenever they talk about giving you a freebie, I want to tell you something. It is a plan, an entrapment for enslavement. Amen. It is an entrapment for enslavement. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. The ways of the Lord, Proverbs 29, the ways of the Lord is strength to the upright. If, if, if someone is acting weak, they're under pressure from the evil one. If someone's coming over strong, I want to tell you, God strengthens His people. I do not apologize for anything I say. I don't apologize for what I do. Why? I am sent by God on a mission. And I am doing what God has told me to do, what He's given me to do. I don't apologize for that, folks. My Bible says, go into all the world. I have gone into the world system. I have infiltrated the world system. 
I got fed up of the religious system. I started to realize this religion is doing nothing for me. And by the way, I'm not talking about that religion or that other religion. I'm talking about the Christian religion will do nothing for you. Oh, yes, you heard me right. I'm talking about the Christian religion. Jesus will set you free. He never, came to, he never came to start another religion. He came to put religion to death and that's why He went to the cross to kill that thing that enslaves you because religion will enslave you. It will cause you to feel good. It will cause you to be a part of something. That, you know, and, and then we, we, we start putting images around us and this and that and we start talking this talk but not walking the walk. And so what is it? It's an insult to God and God's saying, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Jesus took His disciples. They were all standing there having a, a chat having a debate with the religious leaders of that day. And Jesus turned to His disciples. He said, come, let's get out of here. Why? Because that religious spirit will block your ears from listening to God. You cannot hear from God when there's a religious devil around you. He has just blocked off your ears effectively and that's where so many believers are today. They're sitting there year after year and never hearing from God. I gave up traveling around churches in the U.S. because I was so tired of listening to people when I said, oh, God told me this and God told me that. Well, bless God, hallelujah. I've been in this church 40 years and I never heard from God. Get out! Get out! You're in the wrong place! You've got a religious devil around you that's blocked your ears and you not getting revelation from God and Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. That is a prophetic word. That is a future tense. Later on he spoke about the church. That was present tense. And the church he spoke about in Matthew 18 was a cultural church, not... His church. His church is a church built on revelation from God. Revelation. When God's people are getting revelation, it's coming fresh off the oven. I've had revelation here today. Yeah, it comes to me sometimes when I'm, when I'm running my mouth, you know. And whatever. <laughs> Only be strong and a very good courage that you may observe to do all according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right nor to the left, that you, that you may prosper whenever you go. This book of the law, law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will... Ha Make your, your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. When? When you're doing what the Word tells you. When the book of the law is in your mouth. Day and night. And then you will have good success. You will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Don't be a wimp. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you, when you know that you've heard from God, you've got that revelation, there's a boldness that comes upon you. Even Elizabeth, who wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost, the, 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 the Spirit of God came upon her, and the very next line says, and she spoke with a loud voice. Why? Spirit of God just got a hold of her. You can't keep quiet when the Spirit of God gets hold of you. You open your mouth and out it gushes. Just like Peter. Jesus had separated them from the religious crowd and He puts them to the test and He say, Who, who do men say that I the Son of Man am? They said, Well, some say this and some say that. You know, they just hang out together with Jesus. You know. Some say this, some say that. He said, No, but who do you say that I am? 
And suddenly they realized he's got their backs up against the wall and he just put them on the spot. And he's saying, but who do you? And, and here comes Mac the mouth again, Peter. Okay, <laughs> He's always running his mouth. Why? He's a fisherman. You listen to fishermen when they come in. <laughs> they're running their mouth and we won't go down that road. <laughs> but they're not too pretty language. Okay, And that's Peter. He's a real guy. He's down to earth. Okay, so, so he just opens his mouth as per usual and runs his mouth and gets the shock of his life at what comes out of his own mouth. He said, you, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus, yes, bless God, you got it right. You didn't hear this from man. You just got a revelation from my father. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not stand against it. Come on, folks. The gates of Hades itself shall not stand against my church. What is the church? It's not a building. It's not an organization. It's not a 501c3. Okay, tax exemption certificate. That just put whatever your president's name is as your head of church. Hello? So you better make sure that when you have those things called 501c3, it's good for business, it's good for money, it ain't good for God. It is not, and this is, this, this is the ways of the culture, not the, this is the kingdom of the culture, not the kingdom of God. Okay? Enough said. Somebody's trying to call me here. <laughs> I'll call you back later. <laughs> I love that thing. <laughs> okay. So what are we saying here, folks? We're saying there's a call for God's people to come back to God. You need to be hearing from me afresh because I am about to move you into something. Right there and then, God was preparing his people. We go on to see that after two days, I will revive you. But on the third day, I will raise you up. We found out Egypt was a type of the first day church. The wilderness was a type of the second day church. Those who were born in Egypt, those who were born in Egypt never made it to the promised land. Their sons and daughters were born in the wilderness, which is a type of the second millennial church. God could not bring these people. Why? Because they had... They had a slavery mentality and they couldn't inherit the kingdom of God with a slavery mentality. You might as well shout amen to that. Okay? What is the ways of the evil one? The ways of this world, the ways of the evil one is to entrap you and enslave you again. God set them free, but he couldn't allow them to get to the promised land, so there had to be a new generation raised up right. in the wilderness. The wilderness is a type of the second millennial church that is dead and gone in your lives or should be. Because God said before they were allowed to cross the Jordan... Uh, there needs to be some cleaning up here, folks. I will allow you to move in there. But you're going to have to get rid of some of that stinking thinking. Mm. Moses, my servant, is dead. The mosaic form of leadership, the mosaic format of leadership died right there. When there was one man in charge. Ooh. Ooh, 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 I think I just stepped on the Holy Grail. Okay. You better know and understand. God is raising up a new format of leadership. The scripture has not changed and won't change. Our understanding of it is revelatory. We're starting to get more revelation on what God's plans and purposes are. The scripture don't need to change. That remains the same. The way that you see it, oh, that looks different from here. Amen. 
The Israelites are standing on the, 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 the banks of the Jordan River, which, by the way, is in flood at this time. And uh, they're saying, hang on, uh, Joshua, what's going to happen when we get over there? You know, we were born in the wilderness, and we used to have our Uncle Sam living on the left and Aunt Sally living on the right, and wherever we, God moved us in the wilderness, that was the format. Where we are used to format. We are children of format. We like the four walls around us. We, we get comfortable with that. Here's the problem. They suddenly realized from what God had said, I'm going to give you your inheritance and I'm going to put this tribe over here and this tribe over there. And, and they said, hang on, that means we're not going to be living next door to each other anymore. Nope. Uh, Moses is dead. Yep. Now there's Joshua. They didn't know at the time that Joshua was going to one day start handing over to somebody else. Hmm. Hang on a minute. This means, what does it look like? I want you to put yourself in their shoes. What does it look like to them? It looks like we're about to get disrupted and we're about to get disorganized and that looks like total chaos and confusion over the other side. I am using some words that you've heard in the media recently. In the last couple of years, you've heard some of those words. He's disruptive. He's bringing confusion. He's bringing chaos. You better watch out who you're bad-mouthing. He might just have been put there by God. Because they were looking at Joshua and thinking, this is the author of chaos. And we're going to trust ourselves with him? Look at the river, it's in flood. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Now there's all sorts going through their mind. No, I'm not getting political, okay? But I need you to understand something. I, 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 I'm an immigrant to this nation. I choose to honor the flag. I choose to honor the Constitution. I choose to pray for my president. I might not like him. I, 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 I might not even agree with him. But he is a God's choice for now. Okay? Just like the one before him and the one before that. I prayed for them all. The same way. Why? Because God put them there. And who am I to say no? Who am I to badmouth them? There's a lot of people with loose lips around here. I think, whoa, you better understand something. You might have just crossed the line with God. Watch out. Watch out. God will bring this nation to repentance. God will bring the church to repentance. And it starts in the church. It starts right here in the church. There has to be repentance. There's new leadership in the land. If you do read the media, guess what? We got a new president a year or so back. Guess what? There's new leadership in the land. Why? Moses is dead. And I said it the other day. I thank God for Billy Graham. Wonderful man of God. You will not hear me badmouthing that man. But he's gone. He's dead. And I knew the day it was announced that he was dead. I knew that this is a, this is a turning point for the church. It's either going to go one way or another. In 2002, Macon, Georgia, I, I brought a prophecy that there would be another civil war in this nation. It won't be between north and south. It will be, number one, it will be between those who worship the God of the church and those who worship the church of their God. Two very different points. It is based on political grounds as well. 
because right now you're starting to see a major separation coming in the nation. This is a prophetic thing that is happening. There is separation in the nation. Why? Because there is separation in the church. God is separating the sheep from the wolves. God is bringing out those who worship the God of the church as opposed to those who worship the church of their God. Amen. And they're at loggerheads together right now as we speak. There's, there's confusion in the land. There's a disruption going on. And God is behind it himself. Absolutely. There is separation coming. So we can understand what side of the fence are you going to be on. And I am not talking about this political party or that political party. As far as I'm concerned, both of those political parties are actually one. That's why in Africa we have a snake with two heads. And that's what you have in Washington, D.C. right now is a snake with two heads. It's the same snake, just two different heads at each other every day. And all they're doing is distracting you that's right, that's right. from what God is doing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I do not vote for a political party. Amen. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Proverbs 10, 29. Yes, the way of the Lord is strength of the upright. Uh, an illustration that came to mind this morning was, was I was doing a, an evangelistic crusade in the city of Zomba in Malawi in Central Africa. And uh, we were, the, the, the meeting was drawing to a close, and I just got me a new car that day. It wasn't a brand new one, but it was new to me. So I, I didn't want it outside in the parking lot where there was no lights and people might break it or so, break into it. So I brought it into the crusade grounds under one of the lights so I could keep an eye on it while I'm preaching. <laughs> okay. so I'm busy preaching away, and I'm looking at my new car. Great car. So I gave a call for deliverance. Who's those who need deliverance? And there was a very smartly dressed lady came forward and started manifesting right there and then. And I had a bunch of local pastors sitting on chairs behind me here. And I said, will you guys just go and deal with that? So I carry on speaking. And where do they go to deliver her? My car. <laughs> and so they're all gathered around my car. And I'm... You know, I'm, I'm distracted now. I'm trying to get on with what God's saying. And I'm looking at this lot and thinking, what the heck is going on down there? So eventually I had my associate with me. I said, Willie, just take over a minute, will you? I'm going to go and get this woman delivered. I marched down there. And what do I find? A bunch of Pentecostal pastors saying to the woman, excuse me, excuse me, will you come out? And the devil said, no. <laughs> no. I'm not doing squat. Why? The devil knew they did not know who they are. That's right. That's right. And I'm not boasting, but I walked up there. I knew I was in charge there. I knew God had given me authority. I walked up and said, hey, you, get out in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. <laughs> and that was it. Done. Finished. I walked away. I looked at the pastors and I thought, hello. <laughs> you do not know your authority. You do not know who you are. You're a bunch of religious leaders who have lost sight of what God is wanting to do through you. Amen. Any one of you who was sitting, could have been sitting there that night and could have done exactly the same thing. Some people say, what do you do for fun? Do you play golf? Do you fish? Do you, wa uh, do, 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 do you, you water ski or what? There in Florida, I said, no, I cast out devils for fun. I have fun with the devil. God sent me there just to have fun with the devil. And that's what I do. I love having fun. I love taking authority over people who are bound up, who are dying right there and then of cancer or something like that. Come out! Yes, sir. And that's it. Done. Done deal. No messing about, okay? One of the best for what was that? One of the best films I ever saw come out of Hollywood. And if you haven't seen it, look at it. And it's years old already. It's called The Matrix. Absolute epitome of the third millennium church. Absolutely. And there's this guy, what's his name, Neo? 
Neo. What does that mean? It means new or revive. Hello? Yeah. There's also some Hebrew meanings to that, I believe. Uh, neo. Um, anyway, what does he do? They're trying to convince him of who he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You know, duh, duh, duh. And there, the enemy comes against him, Mr. Smith. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so right there at the end they're in this corridor and Mr. Smith smiling at him I'm going to get you boy why? because you did not pay attention to who you are and right there and then Neo gets a revelation of who he is and he suddenly starts looking different at Mr. Smith oh yeah? okay and suddenly Mr. Smith He's got a different look in his eyes. Right, he <laughs> He's got a different posture. Uh -huh. Maybe he just discovered who he really is. Uh -huh. And suddenly, whoops. And he starts firing at Neo. And Neo, does he catch the bullets or what? Yeah. He's just, bam, 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 bam. And now he's got a smile on his face. I'm going to get you, boy. <laughs> Mr. Smith, you are history. And right there and then, Mr. Smith realizes he just figured out who he is. That is you. That is you. We spend our whole life thinking, oh, well, you know, that's, that's for somebody else, you know, and, and, and this and that. You know, would you pray for me, brother? You know, yeah, of course I'll pray for you. But you don't need me to pray for you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You, the price has already been paid. Wake up and realize who Christ is in you and who you are in Christ. When you get that revelation like Neo, Mr. Smith is history in your life. Come on. He has got no further hold. When I baptize people underwater, I tell them this kind of stuff first. This is who you are when you come out. He has no further authority in your life. You do not need to go back to the street. You do not need to go back to the drugs. That's history. Today, you're a new creature in Christ. And you are empowered to overcome. Amen. And somewhere along the line, religion watered it down. And so, oh, well, I feel sick today. I better get down to the doctor. Maybe he'll put me on this med or that med. <laughs> you don't need those things. Get a revelation of who you are. Hallelujah. Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare for provisions for yourself, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God gave you to possess. God sent me to possess this land called the United States and the Caribbean. And I came from Africa. What is significant about that? Well, the day, I told you this before, some of you haven't heard it. The day I arrived, I flew into Washington, D.C., Dulles Airport. And I'm sitting there asking God, would you give me just one more confirmation that I've done the right thing? And I'll never ask this question again. And right then I looked up at the ceiling and there was a TV hanging from the ceiling tuned to CNN, it was on the news, and I'm looking at CNN. I don't think I've ever watched CNN since. They lied every time, but today they didn't lie because I was looking up at it and they said, we just want to make this announcement that Hurricane Gordon just made landfall on the US. <laughs> and I burst out laughing. I thought, "Woo! this is good stuff. What a confirmation. And I was waiting for a connecting flight and the people around me are looking at me and saying, what's so funny about the, the hurricane making landfall? I said, my name's Gordon. I just made landfall, so watch out. <laughs> well, I was with Vivian Blickensdurfer and, and, and Mike on Monday night at the prayer meeting. And before I got there early and we were just sitting talking and Vivian said to me, you know what? I have never known anybody that had two hurricanes named after them. 
Uh, and I think it's a little bit significant because if you missed the news, there was another Hurricane Gordon just passed by the other day. Okay. And so we got talking about Hurricane Gordon. And she sent me a little something this morning. And I read it out to Jerry. I said, hey, look at this. This, this is somewhat interesting. It's the meaning of the word hurricane. Okay. The true meaning, of, and this is a uh, Florida Sentinel, okay? September two, 2017. The true meaning of the, the word hurricane is her -ikane, the spirit of the African woman who has been stolen, beaten, raped, murdered and thrown overboard the, on the slave ships en route to enslaved lands. This is why all hurricanes start at the same point of exodus of Africa that the slave ships left. The post of the Atlantic slave trade and hit every ship where slaves were sold all through the Caribbean and the American coasts. I want to tell you something. Mm. When God sent me to the U.S., he said, break the back of that religious devil. And he put me right there in the Bible belt and said, break the back of that religious devil. What does that religious spirit do? It enslaves people. Yes. And God sent me from Africa to deal with that spirit. Mm. And that is why I do not apologize for what I say. I might get things wrong from time to time. I don't apologize for what I say. I don't apologize for what I do. I am sent on a mission by God to destroy the works of the evil one that has crept into the American church, specifically in the Bible Belt. It is a distraction. It stops people from, it blocks up their ears so they cannot hear properly. And would you believe, coming in here this morning, one of my ears was totally blocked up. <laughs> and I started rebuking that the other, what the heck? Then Jerry and I got talking, and suddenly I realized, whoa, this, 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 this is symbolic. Okay? What is the mission? My mission is to break the back of a religious devil that crept churches and I will not apologize for doing it. I want to tell you something. I will do that with a vengeance. God sent me all the way from Africa to come and do that thing and I am going to do it. And the cat, what does that thing do? It enslaves people. It encaptivates people right here in this age. I, I, I was raised up in Central Africa I was a son of a missionary. I had no idea other than from my school education about slavery. I had no idea about slavery. And one day I was in Ethiopia and I came face to face with a woman slave who jumped out of nowhere. I had a pastor on either side of me. We were walking down the main road and this woman jumped out and grabbed my ankles. I nearly fell over. Suddenly from a, a brisk walk, it suddenly stopped and I nearly fell over. And I'm looking at this woman who's screaming in the Amharic language. And I said to the, and the pastors are rebuking her and all sorts. I said, well, what is this? They said, oh, she wants to be your slave. I said, what? Oh yeah, she wants to be your slave. And if you'll take her in, she will serve you all the days of her life. But if you'll take her children with with her, if you bring in her children with her, they will serve your children for the rest of their lives too. Only please make a slave out of me because it's my only hope. I got exposed to slavery right there. I found out that slavery is, 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 is up and running this day. It is ten times worse than what it ever was in the past. The big thing today is enslaving uh, women, enslaving children, and it's the same spirit, and I'll tell you what that spirit is. It is a religious devil that gets, it, it infiltrates various religions. 
It causes them to be introvert. It causes them to look with self-pity at themselves. Oh, me and my situation. You don't know my situation. I don't want to know your situation. I am so sorry, but I do not want to know your situation. I will pray for you. I'll drag you by the scruff of the neck and get you delivered from it, but you're going to walk in it. Or don't even ask me to pray for you. Because you're going to have to make some decisions in your life. Are you going to walk in victory? I, want to, I, I have to end now. I want to say this. I am condemned. I'm a condemned man. I am, I am condemned to a life of victory. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, there ain't nothing you can do that's going to stop that. It's in me. It's in me. I appreciate what Jesus did for me at the cross. Yes. I am not putting that to nothing. I choose to walk in victory. Mm. I choose to speak over my situations. Mm. And sometimes they don't work out as quickly as I'd like them to. Okay? But, you know, you've got to learn a little bit of patience here and maybe it's something wrong with me. So I'll speak to that situation again. I refuse to weaken I will not weaken because that is the, 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 the function of the evil one today is to bring weakness. But the ways of God, uh, Proverbs 10, 29 says, the ways of God is strength to the upright. So God strengthens the upright. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't even watch or listen to Christian radio and TV anymore because all I hear is a bunch of wimps a bunch of wimps. I hear them praying on the radio. I have to switch it off. Oh my God, please never, ever pray for me. Because there's no victory in their prayers. They're speaking the problem instead of speaking the solution. Amen. I don't want you praying for me. Don't ever pray for me if you cannot pray in victory. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll use that at RGA. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I need to close up. Hallelujah. God has condemned me to a life of victory. What is the church? Let me remind you, the church is the empowerment of His kingdom. God says, my church is the empowerment of my kingdom. Amen. The church is very functional in the kingdom of God. The church is a people who are empowered to overcome, to walk in victory. You are empowered to walk in victory. The only reason you are not walking in victory is either you don't realize it or you've been, you've been deceived by the culture, the kingdom of the culture which verses the kingdom of our God. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.